I'm just reading through this report from the psychiatrist, uh, Vince Lai, you remember the, this infamous, well, all murders are infamous, but this particularly infamous murder, be, beheaded a young man and just disgusting what went on. Uh, Vince Lai's psychiatrist uh, said on Monday the schizophrenic man has not been violent and no longer suffers delusions. Well, <laughs> what we have to ask is, first of all, how... how Definite is psychiatry, and I, I'm, I'm not condemning psychiatry, but if you have a broken leg, if the bone is sticking out of your thigh, the doctor doesn't say, oh, I think you may have heartburn. I mean, he knows what is going on. Psychiatry is still relatively vague. There are some things we can't actually define within that particular discipline. And the man's obviously on his medication right now. What if he goes off medication, which is a constant problem and challenge for people who do suffer from schizophrenia in particular? The mother of this individual's poor victim, Carol Tadelli joins us now from Winnipeg by Skype. The weather out there is terrible. We couldn't get it to studio. Carol, thanks for, for spending this time. And I'm not going to give you any cliches or, or anything. I, I have no idea what it must have been like or how you feel. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. But what happens now? There is a very good chance that the, the man who murdered your son could be free within days. Well, the, the truth is that um, he will be on unsupervised passes. If, if he's given what the treatment team is granting him, he will have unsupervised passes uh, to mingle in the public, and I don't think that, uh, that he should. The crux of the problem in Canada is that NCR, or not criminally responsible, is a national crisis, and globally, actually. And it's being handled provincially under the health care uh, budget. Um, that's really a big problem. The biggest problem, though, is that even when close family, co-workers, relatives have uh, verifiable proof that an individual is suffering from severe mental illnesses, they cannot force them into treatment and we can't force medicate them. Mm. If, that in, if the afflicted individual is at all resistant to treatment, they are under no legal yeah. requirement to receive that treatment. And that will be the case again with Vince Lee. Ultimately, when he's released, he will not be, um, there is no legal mechanism that will require him to uh, continue his medication. Is he required to, and, and of course, when that comes to, to people who haven't broken the law, that should apply. No one should be forced into treatment, but when they've broken the law, it should be different, I believe. Will he be required to, to see a probation officer, a doctor, anyone at all on a regular basis after his release? Well, they, the uh, Review boards are mandated. They must find the least onerous on the afflicted individual or on the offender. Um, the, again, there, you know, in remote areas especially, a person may be told that they're supposed to or should uh, report to somebody or attend a program. These individuals and programs don't exist. Why? Because there's no funding. At the end of the day, it's down to the dollars, right? Yeah. There's no funding. Now, let me ask you, 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 you've used the, the phrase afflicted individual three times. Is that the official phrase they use for the, the, this man who murdered your son? No, the official phrase that they use is um, not criminally responsible. He's right. not a criminal, he's a patient. Yeah. Well, I, I spent some time uh, visiting an institute in, in, uh, in Ontario where some of these people are, uh, how shall I put it, housed. And, and it is quite shocking because... Uh, one doesn't want to be sadistic or cause people unnecessary harm, but they're called patients, as you, as you say. Um, there are nurses there, not warders. They're in rooms, not in cells. They're allowed to watch pornography. Anything that anyone outside can do, they can do pretty much. And I mean, they're treated with kid gloves. This is not someone who smashed up a, a building, who wrecked a car. He murdered your son. He murdered my son in one of the most horrific uh, fashions in Canadian history. He cannibalized my son, and they don't talk about that because it's unpleasant. Um, you know, the reality is this man is unpredictably dangerous. The, the psychiatrist at the trial testified under oath that Vince Lee could suffer a relapse at any time in the future, even while medicated, because quite frankly, they just don't know. Mm. He was way over the extreme of what a uh, um, schizophrenic individual would normally do. Oh, I oh. get that. I understand all of that, and knowing that, and knowing that there is a critical and severe shortage of mental health care providers nationally, and that nothing in the system has changed from when it failed before, Vince Lee has been seen, which is very common in, in all NCR, I, I venture to say all NCR cases, 
most of the time. These people have a known history of mental imbalance, have, have been in contact with the system before, but have not received the care, treatment, and medication that they require because they don't think there's anything wrong with them. Yeah. And I, I want to emphasize here that, that the vast, vast majority of people with schizophrenia uh, never hurt anyone else. They may hurt themselves, but not other people. And, and an even greater majority of people with mental health issues are completely passive. They're, they're more from the victims of violence than anything else. But in this case, in this yeah. case, we have to be kept safe. You, as a mother of the victim, have to feel that there is punishment. Yes, punishment for, for what was done to your boy. And I don't... How, how long has, has uh, Vince Lee been in prison? Or um, in uh, incarceration, it, shall we say? Timothy Roldot has been dead for six years until July 30th of this year. And we have now been through the trial and okay. six review board hearings already. Carol, I, I thank you so much for coming on the show. I... I just hope very, very much that something is resolved that can give you some sort of peace and closure. I'm not sure that it's possible. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you.